And we're live. We're live. Yep. Hi, guys. Ben Dor here with the American Firearms Association and Minnesota Gun Rights. All of us here on this video are working with gun rights organizations across the country. And right now, right now, um, actually just maybe two minutes ago, the Senate Judiciary Committee in Washington, D.C. Um, uh, ended their first hearing on David Chipman. The Joe Biden's nomination for the director of the ATF. Okay, this is a guy, and we just got done this big long hearing. It's been two and a half hours of nonsense, but it was very revealing and it told us a lot about what Chipman intends to do if he becomes head of the American of uh, of the ATF. So we got Aaron Dore checking in here on the top right. We got Chris on the bottom, guys. Do us a favor, share this video right now, press the button. You know Facebook is going to do us any favors to get this video out there, but we need to pound on the U.S. Senate right now on this committee to make sure to do everything we can do to stop David Chipman from being confirmed as the director of the ATF. Guys, we've been hearing for, for decades, and especially – what for the last three or four uh, months now with Biden in in the White House, the, uh, the 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 sniffer in chief that no one's coming for your guns. You guys are all hysterical. We're not trying to come for your guns. We're, we're just trying to make some small adjustments around the edges. But if you watch today's hearing, even for a moment, you know that this guy he's a madman. David Chipman is a true madman, tyrant wannabe who is lusting over the ability to terrorize gun owners with the power of the ATF. This, this organization has only ever done that. They've terrorized gun owners and they've armed Mexican drug cartels. Don't forget, don't forget that part under uh, under the, the Obama administration. And these guys are hoping to put this little thug tyrant in power to terrorize gun owners. And if you watched a moment of the hearing, it's very obvious that, look, look at that photograph, look at that face. Psycho. That Psycho. guy wants to terrorize gun owners. And he made that very clear in all of his comments. I mean, Ben, you were the one who was on point on most of this broadcast this morning, the, the, the hearing. There's not a single gun control bill that they talked about this guy doesn't support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they always try so hard to sound reasonable. One of the questions he was asked was, uh, David Chibben, is is there any stance that you take on Second Amendment issues that is out of line with uh, what the American people think or believe? And he goes, no. Uh, and then they go, uh, Mr. Chipman, uh, do you believe that all AR-15 should be banned? And he goes, yes. yes. Back to back. This guy, and you can see it all over his face the entire time. Um, he was enjoying this. He's looking forward to this. And like I was saying a few minutes ago, right out of the gate, right out of the gate, Dick Durbin is thanking him for stepping up and doing this, thanking him for getting involved. And then he goes on this big like fan fest on Chipman. He goes, oh, hold on to your seat, buddy. They're, those gun owners are really coming after you. They're lying about you and, and what you did during Waco. And uh, and he starts like falling all over this guy as if somehow David Chipman is the poor lost soul who's right. getting beat on by gun owners. This, pure, this poor little bureaucrat is, uh, is the one who's being mistreated by the gun owners. Well, two and a half hours later, it's very clear. He said, I'm going after the gun manufacturers and I'm going after gun owners before they can commit crimes. Yeah, um, you guys. So today was this uh, Senate confirmation hearings. What we're asking everybody to do right now, you will see uh, at, in the pinned comments of whatever page you're watching this on right now, you will see there is a link right there for you guys to send emails to your U.S. senators um, who will have to vote yes or no on this on this freaking commie bastards. Uh, nomination. So especially right now, we're asking everybody get involved, take action right now, because every single congressional congressional staffer on the Hill knows that this very controversial hearing just got over and they're all watching their emails. They're all looking for feedback to see what's the reaction from gun owners, how organized are people. So we're asking everybody right now, click those links those pinned comments that you see in all the, vi the videos that you're watching right now and fire off those emails to your U.S. senators immediately. And also, after you're done, this, this link is universal. Send it out to your buddies. Send it out to your buddies and say, hey, this guy is everything that's evil. It's everything we've all been talking about since 1994. 
Um, and let's uh, let's 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 get our U.S. senators to vote hell no on this son of a. And that especially yeah. goes true if you have a Republican United States senator. I mean, let's just not forget, David Chipman didn't just parachute into D.C. today. The guy has spent 25 yeah. or 30 years in the, the business of terrorizing gun owners. 25 years at ATF, including the Waco tragedy, where he stood on the ground on top of the charred embers with dead bodies in the background behind him posing for selfies. And then for the last six years, for the last six years, once he finally left the ATF, he's worked for, in case you don't know, drum roll, every town for gun safety, and then currently Gifford's uh, gun control organization. This guy is literally been plucked right out of the gun control crowd that helped to uh, try to elect uh, China Joe Biden. And now he's the guy they're going to put in there to destroy the Second Amendment and terrorize gun owners. So the, any there's no pretense left. There's no they're not trying to be objective. They're not trying to say, oh, he's the most qualified for the job. B.S. So if you're in a red state or even a, a purple swing state with a with, with a GOP uh, senator, they need to stand up and be counted on right now. If you're in Iowa, of course, the, which has been where we've done a lot of work in Iowa since we got going with Iowa gun owners, Chuck Grassley is the ranking member. That means he's the number one minority member uh, on behalf of the GOP. Chuck Grassley will dictate much of the tone that comes from the GOP in this entire process. And I got to tell you, I didn't see much out of Chuck today. And well, there was, I mean, there was virtually anything. Yeah. yeah. There's virtually nothing. Uh, he asked, he asked one question uh, on, he asked a question about why the ATF hasn't given uh, him some, some papers that he was requesting and how they had responded with some bureaucratic nonsense it had nothing to do with gun rights. And after he, after Chipman answered that question about why he hadn't gotten his paperwork yet, uh, he said, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm going to um, submit some more questions um, in writing. And there was like basically not another word out of the ranking Republican member of the committee for the entire two and a half hours. Yeah, nothing. It, it took a long time for somebody. I think it was finally Josh Hawley out of Missouri. Uh, for those of you who are watching down there right now, uh, it was uh, him who finally started to deviate from the, the typical Republican line of questioning. They were all asking him questions about uh, what he would do as ATF chief, uh, his time as a previous ATF uh, agent and stuff like that. Only it was finally Holly who started quoting from him as in, in his capacity as the director for Gifford's Law Center gun control organization and start hanging that around his neck. There's absolutely no scenario where any Republican should vote yes on this guy. It's the definition of letting the fox into the hen house. So if you're watching right now, especially in Ohio, Rob Portman, folks, you got to pound on him. In in uh, Pennsylvania, Pat Toomey, um, the guy has always been a squish on gun control. He's like the guy uh, who is who likes to stab gun owners in the back. Fire off those emails right now. North Carolina, Tom Tillis, Richard Burr, both of these people have signaled their support for red flags gun confiscation they're both republicans this vote is going to be very close very close we can't let one single a republican flake off on this thing there's a strong chance this nomination can still be defeated yeah this is, this is an yes. ongoing yeah. situation in dc the radical left is very scared because They've already lost a couple of Biden's nominees in other uh, positions. And this is about the most toxic loser that Biden has ever appointed to any position so far. And the GOP, yeah. if they actually stand up and unite against this guy, they have the ability to possibly uh, st stop this guy and, and, and destroy his nomination. That's only if the GOP does their job. So again, right. GOP senator, make your voice heard. But for a lot of Georgians who are watching right now, there's no, there's no pass for us in Georgia either because John Ossoff is on this committee and Ossoff, well, he's not up in the fall, next next fall. Raphael Warnock is, and this guy is terrified that anything he does right now will cost him his job next year. And what's more, the Democrats in general are terrified that if they advance this guy, if they fight for this guy, it may cost them their entire majority next yeah. fall. And so Somebody, there's a lot on the line right now. Well, that was yeah. that was that was made very clear 
right out of the gate again with what I was talking about a few minutes ago from from the chairman. I mean, there was five right. different people on there to be confirmed, and the first thing right out of the gate was was uh, Durbin trying to run interference on Chipman and try to settle the score and set things straight on you know what his actual role was in Waco and what kind of person he actually is. They don't do that stuff unless it's become a huge talking point that they have got to mitigate. So what Aaron said is 100% true. These people are feeling the pressure. You could tell that the entire time it was it was Chipman was was the main was the main person that people were there to talk to and talk about. The others only got a couple of questions. It was all focused on Chipman. So yes, the controversy is there. Gun owners are fired up. We have to get more fired up. Continue to send those emails. We don't care who your U.S. senators are. I see some Minnesotans in here where I'm from saying, oh, Klobuchar and Smith. Send them, send them, send them. Every email helps. The staffers all talk. The senators all talk. Even if Klobuchar is one of those people who's a guaranteed yes vote, people will know that gun owners nationwide are pissed off. They're furious about this guy. We don't want David Chipman as head of the ATF. So send those emails. Do it now. And, and you what don't know that? you don't know how effective or not effective your emails can be. It's been a exactly. few months since I've been in the Hart building, the Hart Senate office building. But the fact of the matter is that there's – there's U.S. centers like Kristen Cinema or whatever her name is out in Arizona. There's uh, um, West Virginia U.S. Senator Joe Manchin. If their office is across the hallway from Amy Klobuchar or <laughs> Klobuchar, um, you have we have no idea how those people are talking. And if and if those conversations happen, like holy crap! I mean, this thing really has the gun rights community unified in opposition against this guy. Um, those conversations matter. Um, we, we have a lot of friends now on Capitol Hill, the, only the best ones, not the pieces of shit. But um, we have a lot of friends up there who, uh, who, who have been telling us all about how this, this situation exists. So hammer those links, pass them out there to your friends. Uh, so many people know other people in other states. This link, if you're watching Ohio right now, it's just as good in Florida. Send it down there to your friends exactly. and say, hey, fire off your emails. A lot of people who are still asking about what's the point in Georgia, what's the point in Minnesota. I'm going to answer that question again. See, this is the American Firearms Association. This is not, this is not the NRA. We're not trying to convince Raphael Warnock to vote no because right. he's a good guy. We're not trying to kiss anybody's ass. We're not trying to hope that Amy Klobuchar, Tina Smith votes yes because they love the Constitution. This is about power. This is about pressure politics and showing all of these leftist losers that, you know, we don't care why you vote no, but if you vote yes, if your conference votes yes, your chances of retaining the majority next year, next fall, go really, really low because the people of this country are going to respond to Joe Biden and his heavy handed uh, a tyranny over us. And the faster you guys get off of the Biden train, the, the greater your chances are of keeping your majority. So it's not about trying to keep these people happy or argue with them or convince them of anything. This is about you know, putting the pressure to them as hard as we possibly can. Yep. So, uh, again, uh, hit the links. Hit the links. That's what this video is all about, is getting you guys in contact with your U.S. senators today, right now. Um, so... Well, it was it was bizarre. I mean, so we're sitting there listening. Of course, they go over, they go over to that old crone. Uh, what's her name? Diane Feinstein. Die -fi. And uh, and she starts complaining, and she's going, "I haven't seen the gun control that I've wanted for the last twenty years. I've seen some big promises out of out of the ATF. And if you're confirmed, Mister Chipman, are you gonna are you gonna do what the ATF supposed to be doing this whole time? And uh, and he goes, "Yeah, absolutely, gonna get it done for you, Die Fi." <clears throat> Uh, we're on the march here. We're going to target these gun manufacturers and we're going after gun owners. And he said, he said multiple times, yes, I want to ban AR 15s. I want to ban assault weapons. And then he was asked, what's your definition of an assault weapon, Chipman? What? Well, uh, the ATF's, uh, uh, you know, definition, they said, no, what is your definition of a so called assault weapon? Because it's a made up term. Um, but what what are you specifically going to go after? 
And uh, he refused to answer that question until later on. He finally said that any firearm that holds bigger than a 22, 22 caliber, any firearm with a detachable magazine that's bigger than a 22, he wants to classify as a so-called assault weapon. And he already said that all so-called assault weapons should be banned, confiscated, and destroyed. So he straight up said in this hearing that virtually every single modern sporting rifle that we all own, ARs, AR pistols, all those different platforms, they should all be classified as assault weapons. They should all be banned. And not just not uh, not future sales, not just the manufacture of, he straight up said that they should be confiscated. We should go back to people like you and me who already own these things, who already own these guns, and take them from us throughout the country. So well, that's his to- idea. That's his idea of like that's the height of pleasure for this guy. He he wants to send ATF SWAT teams house to house, door to door, to take all the guns that we have. That's exactly well, what he wants to do. If if you listened closely, I mean, there was all kinds of red flags that were going on during that conversation. I mean, with, in his interaction with DiFi, um, she was like, like, like you said, he she was castigating him and the ATF for failing to deliver on her gun control dry dreams over the years, um, and. And but but like the response from him was, yeah, if you guys confirm me, I'm going to do X, Y and Z. And her and her reaction was, if you do set out on that road, I will do everything I can to provide you with the resources. So they were talking about like expand, like massively expanding uh, the number of officers that are going around persecuting gun owners. They were talking about uh, I I thought one of the, the most rich moments was. Uh, if he gets in there, he wants to really crack down on gun trafficking. And I was asking myself, huh, <laughs> I wonder if he's going to crack crack down on the ATF's fast and furious gun trafficking, because those dumbasses were the ones who got innocent Americans killed uh, in the previous Democrat administration. And so um, but there was all kinds of red flags in there. You can tell this confirmation hearing is kind of like the floodgates. And if he gets past it, it's just going to like. Yeah, it's going to they're going to flood the zone absolutely with everything that the Giffords Law Center uh, can come up with. So hit the links. And we we assume there's going to be more hearings on on this guy. They still have maybe. more they need to maybe. I mean, they still have more they need to talk over, hopefully. But here's the thing. This is the first hearing. And so if they don't hear from us, if they don't hear from gun owners now, they're going to go, hey, hey, we just had this hearing. We heard from like nobody. Nobody cares. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna confirm this guy. We're gonna get it done. If nobody says anything, they're just gonna confirm him, and that's gonna be the end of it. So you gotta send those emails. You gotta do it. Um, send that link to your friends, your family, everybody you know. Um, get it done, guys. We have got to do everything we can do to put pressure on these politicians to shut this down. Yep. There's definitely folks who are sitting here. Just they're they're kind of concerned. What are we, you know, what what can we do? Or what's the point? We have we had a stolen election, folks. Here's the thing: there's always more freedom that we can lose. There's always more these guys are going to try and do to us if we don't stand up right now and unify and push back on this guy as hard as we possibly can. We're opening up the doors and we're telling Joe Biden, just you know what, do whatever the hell you want, do whatever you want. So we can stop David Shipman. We can defeat this guy with enough pressure from gun owners. I don't care if your U.S. senator is a Republican. He, of course, he needs to hear from you twice. But your Democrat U.S. senators as well, we're going to discuss this. They are not going to vote against this guy because they believe in the Second Amendment. But they damn sure might go and talk to Chuck Schumer behind closed doors, not on the floor of the Senate, and say, Chuck, dude, if we advance this guy, I'm done. Whether I'm Joe Manchin, I'm done. Raphael yeah. Warnock, I'm done. I can't afford this vote. Pull this guy. Find somebody else. Yeah. That's how right. this game is played in D.C. That's how this works. Only if they hear from enough gun owners. So take a moment. Send your email. It's it's automatic. It's, it's, it's the email is pre-written. Punch in your address. Hit send. It takes you ten seconds. Well, I want to I want to speak specifically to gun owners in Ohio and Pennsylvania right now. If you have friends in West Virginia. Um, which is Joe Manchin territory. I mean, he's the guy, he is the Democrat who's been sitting there saying, no, I'm not going to vote in favor of court packing or expanding the Supreme Court. 
Um, he's uh, he said, I'm not going to vote to end the filibuster and give the Democrats complete unilateral control of Washington, D.C. So if you have friends in West Virginia right now, uh, since there's not a designated page that's watching this video right now, please send this link to them so that they can fire off emails to to, to Joe Manchin. Um, and I guess also if you live in North Carolina, that's not very far away from West Virginia either. So please, if you're watching any of those states and you have friends in, in West Virginia, let's target it. Let's work on that, everybody. I love it. Yes. Oh, by the way, if you guys like firearms suppressors, um, a lot of people have them. A lot oh, of yeah. people love them. Yeah. You know, here's another thing that he said, and he said this before he got nominated. So now he was really trying to backpedal on this. Uh, yeah. But this, I think this was a Reddit post of his. And he said, the only people who would ever want a firearm suppressor are gun lobbyists and criminals who want easier access to dangerous weapons. That's what he said. This guy wants to take away your cans. He wants to take away your suppressors. Okay. He's going to come after all of those things. And uh, there, there were a whole bunch of other comments he had made. He was on some uh, radio show uh, a while back, again, before he got nominated. And he was mocking and ridiculing all the first-time gun buyers. So and we know who those yeah. people have been. They've been mostly African-Americans, women, um, who have been buying all these guns for the first time during the 2020 nightmare psycho show that we all just lived through. And so all these people are buying new guns and and he said something to the effect of, you know, if you're going to buy these guns, at least please hide it, you know, on your prepper shelf behind your cans of tuna and the beef jerky. And please just don't take it off of there. And so he was just, he was just, oh, I know it was unbelievable. And so that's what he was being asked. He said, how on earth can we trust you to be some level headed head of this uh, head of the ATF here and, and, and take things in stride when you so clearly are an arrogant, condescending piece of shit who hates gun owners, who hates the little guy. He's an elitist piece of crap. And we got to yeah. shut it down. We got to shut it down. Yeah, I got yeah. I got tuna. I got beef jerky yeah, and I've got guns. Jerky. And I I'm a gun all... lobbyist. So yeah. uh, what the hell? Is... <laughs> I did think the same thing. I was like, I am a gun lobbyist. <laughs> so yes, I am one of those people who who does uh, like uh, like suppressors. So um, we got to get this thing shut down, guys. Send that email. Do it right away, please. Just don't forget, folks. This is not. I mean, this. I mean, to me, guys, this is not about policy at all. We're not here arguing anymore about the need for an AR. We're not arguing about the need for a thirty-round mag, a hundred-round drum mag, a fifteen-round mag. We're not talking about the need for eighty, you know, eight percent lowers suppressors. None of that. We're not trying to convince anybody of anything at all. This is very simple. These people are tyrants. And they have been yeah. waiting and waiting and waiting for a chance to make slaves out of Americans. And this yeah. is their best shot. And they know it because they have no guarantee of keeping control of the Congress after election night 2022. And this is their big shot. And their goal here is not to tweak the edges. It's not to make small adjustments. They want to disarm and enslave the American population because they know this is not some third world crap hole. This is not some, you know, some, some, you know, it's not China. We're not some, we're not some um, area where it's going to fall down and give the government what they want without a fight. And they know they cannot impose their socialist communist agenda on an armed population. That is what's at stake here right now. There's nothing less than that going on. And, and let's not forget the obvious thing here. If the shoe was on the other foot, if, uh, it, I, I hate, even hate to say his name, but let's say that Republicans had nominated uh, Wayne LaPierre to head the ATF. The Democrats would not give a single freaking inch. It is yeah. time for the Republican Party to stop pretending that you can negotiate with these Marxist, communist, freaking terrorists. So there's no condition under which, or and, and, and no level of understanding, no level of questioning during these committee hearings right. that can allow a Republican to cross over that line and have a Giffords Law Center stooge, bought and paid for stooge as the head law enforcement of the ATF. None. No negotiations with these people. They should be rejected completely because if the shoe was on the other foot and we watched what happened, under all four years of President Trump, right? 
The yeah. Democrats didn't let him do anything without resisting and blocking and, 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 and opposing at every single step of the way. The whole yeah, Russian Kavanaugh. hoax. Kavanaugh. Um, Kavanaugh. Everything. Everything. Yep. We can't let Republicans sit there and be like, oh, no, I, I asked some really tough questions during that committee, and I thought his answer was... The guy is a freaking commie bastard. You don't put commie bastards in charge of uh, a whole ABC di you know, uh, divisions of government. No. So... I agree. There we go. Um, hit those links, everybody. Um, share them around with your friends. If you're in these Facebook groups that are, that are you know, a dime a dozen, jump in there, drop this link. Uh, you can just copy and paste it right there from in the comments section. Drop it in your Facebook groups. Send it out in your emails. And let's shut this crap down. So uh, that's all we've got for today. Um, until next time, uh, stay safe, carry on, take action. Get and share the video. Share the video. Exactly. All right, guys. We'll be back.